Good morning, Patrick. Hey, good morning. Oh, it's the other way. Is okay? Yeah. Oh, my God. Hey, man, what's happening? There he is. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah, ironically, I'm in the conference room at, at, in Thousand Oaks where I saw you last time. This is the, oh, that's this so funny. Point. Yeah, full circle, but uh, we're on the phone instead. Yeah, no, it's good. I'm in Malibu, finally back in town. So. Were you in Europe or were you in Maine? Or where, where you I've been everywhere this last year. I started off in January working in New York, then I went to Rome, and then I was in Ireland. Then I went to Maine for a week to just catch up with the family. And then I was off to, to France and then Germany and now back home. And then I go to Maine to gear up for the challenge on Monday, on Sunday, actually. Sunday. All right, cool. That's great. Family's doing well? Yeah, they're doing great. Really good. I mean, it's, you know, back in school. Um, but unfortunately, PCH got shut down this morning because it was a fatality. So the boys didn't get to go into school. So they're here today. Oh, I didn't even know that. Okay. Yeah, it's just, it's, it, there were two accidents, one last night and then one today. Fatalities, people crossing the, you know, PCH at night. Uh, and oh then getting, God. unfortunately, What a way terrible. to go. Oh, awful. And then I think next, I, I think, uh, I think the same weekend as the challenge is the Malibu try. So we've been kind of trying to figure out our, our riding route out here to avoid PCH. <sighs> yeah. <clears throat> or just do the try and do the bike yeah. component. You know, you could do that if you got some that strong would, swimmers. Would require, yeah, would require me to know how to swim, which I not. <laughs> yeah. That's the part of the try I don't want to try. Oh, yeah, cool. All right. Well, hey, Patrick, by the way, I've been told that we are actually live here, so we might have people listening in. On our, oh, okay, good. On well, now people know what's so, going on. Uh, anyway. <laughs> So, I'll, uh, uh, sh shall we? Shall we begin? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So, uh, so I'll kick this off by just saying hi to Instagram. Uh, my name is Eric Price. I work for Amgen, specifically in oncology. And uh, as you can see on the screen, talking to a uh, friend of ours at Amgen, of course, a friend to many at Amgen, and and known uh, uh, very well for many things, but to us. Uh, very well known as an advocate for cancer patients. So Patrick Dempsey, welcome. Hello. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Great to be here. And uh, thank you. It's hard to believe it's been 14 years yeah. we've been together now. And going into the challenge this weekend, not this weekend, but on the 25th and 26th, it's been a remarkable journey. And uh, yeah. it's very exciting. Yeah, that's, that's kind of where I wanted to start with you is 14 years with Amgen as the title sponsor of the challenge. Uh, of, of course, last year, uh, I think you were 100% virtual. This year, it will be a combination of in-person and virtual, correct? And, and maybe we can talk a little bit to, uh, to folks uh, about the challenge, or, or if it's better context, we could start with the Dempsey Center and then, and then move into the challenge. Yes, we can, do, we can do both. So the Dempsey Center is a place where um, anybody who's been impacted by cancer we support them. We don't treat the disease, we treat the person in a holistic way. Uh, this was inspired, of course, by the Breakaway from Cancer initiative that I was a part of many years ago. And also that was in the midst of my, my mother's uh, cancer battle. And that was really the inspiration behind creating the center in Lewiston, Maine. We now have one in Portland, Maine. We have two facilities. Um, it's like, how do, we, how do we support people you know, that have been impacted. Not only the person themselves who has been diagnosed, but the caregivers, the children, grandparents, all of that. And, and that's what the center does. We do it in a holistic way where we are actually open physically now. So we're doing acupuncture again and Reiki and nutrition and things like that, as well as support groups that are virtual where Dempsey Connects is part of that. And that's been very, uh, very successful. And in order to keep this happening, we do a fundraising activity, which is the Dempsey Challenge, which is the, which is the bike ride, the walk, and the run. And that's the, the biggest fundraising effort that we have. And that's coming up at the end of the month on the 25th and the 26th. And it's a great celebration of life. And it's also a motivator to be active. If we're active, we're feeling better. And also it helps our immune systems. And it just, you know, gives us something to do and get us out in, into nature, hopefully. Yeah, awesome. Hey, so in that, in that, reply there you mentioned a couple of things one was your mother and the other one was the state of maine so 
maybe for those folks that, that don't know the background here, and first of all, hey, congratulations with expanding into Portland, but if, if folks don't know the background, you're from Maine, the connectivity to Maine uh, as someone who grew up there is obvious, but I think there's also some connectivity in terms of uh, cancer rates in the state of Maine and, and, and specifically why you started the Dempsey Center in Maine and then maybe right. a little bit about your mom as well. Right, I grew up in, in sort of central Maine, Lewiston, Auburn area, Turner, Buckfield, in that, in that area. Um, and growing up, it was, there were a lot of mills that were happening at that time. And of course, the manufacturing, like everywhere in America, has moved off offshores and it really damaged the community. And, you know, because of that, there were a lot of environmental impacts with cancer. We have a, a big problem with lung cancer, you know, breast cancer. Um, th these are big numbers. You know, a lot of other states in, in the country have these issues too because of our environmental reasons and other issues that contribute to that. Um, so cancer is a, has a profound impact in our community. And that was one of the things that, you know, you never really escaped that growing up. You always knew someone who was either just diagnosed or someone who has lost their life or someone who's currently in the battle. And then it finally hit home with my mother. Uh, I believe it was in uh, maybe 97, she was first diagnosed with ovarian cancer, had over 12 reoccurrences. Uh, it was very hard on the family, very challenging. Um, we had a long time with her. She ended up passing away in 2014. Um, but she had a heroic battle and, and through that inspired a lot of things and it really inspired the opening of the Dempsey Center. Um, and it was something that was very much needed in our community and certainly in the state. And I would say anyone who is diagnosed uh, in the world should be getting this type of holistic support along the way. And that's really our mission at the center to, to take care of the people who've been impacted in the state of Maine, as well as spreading the word nationally and internationally. Yeah, absolutely. So if, first of all, I, I don't know how many people are watching us. I don't know where they're from, but I do want to say hi to everyone from Lewiston, Maine. I, I've been there a couple of times now with you. I've been on stage with you. The community shows up in, in such an impressive way, and it is such a great weekend, and, I, and I'm, I'll miss being there with you guys uh, this year for sure, you and your sisters, but I uh, do definitely want to say hi to, to those in Lewiston, Maine, and maybe, maybe just a, a, a comment about how the sense of community and this kind of really showing up for families that uh, have have someone who is fighting this battle uh, of cancer really helps uh, because I, I feel like that is so um, it's so alive almost in the community during this during the weekend we just see it uh, this this tremendous show up of support and uh, I, I'm just curious how does how does that feel to those families that are fighting cancer. Well, it's going to be, it's, it's really nice that we can actually have the event physically this year, as well as virtually. Uh, I would have to say the staff and the board and the volunteers have done a fantastic job making it safe for people. Um, we are requiring masks. Uh, people are, for the most part, vaccinated, which is really good. I think it's really important to get vaccinated so that it allows us to have the, the event. We will have it in the park uh, in Lewis and Auburn. We'll start the event there. There'll be a good flow to the event. So that then creates a sense of community once again, where we can see each other, where we can be close to each other, which we're all really needing now. But we want to do it in a safe way. So we've been working hand in hand with the state and the CDC to put on an event that is safe, uh, hopefully for everyone and, and people feel secure. Good signage around the park to let people know what the flow will be and what the, the dynamic in the park will be. We'll definitely have water for people. We'll definitely have coffee. We will, you know, when you finish the challenge, you get lobster usually. We have a nice lobster bake, and this year we'll have lobster rolls instead. So a lot of the traditional things we've managed to, to be able to put together and, and, and have consistency with. It's a real testament to the staff and the leadership have really done a great job as a team to, to organize this. And certainly medalists who put on the event have done some great stuff. They had great success uh, at the Cleveland Clinic last week, I believe it was, with their events. And, you know, they've learned a lot through the year to make this event possible. And with that, it really brings people together who have been impacted. You're developing a team to, to raise money, and that gets people active and out together in a sense of community. And then when we all come together and all the teams meet, when it's either on the run or the walk or the ride, there's that connection and support. And then that just helps everybody get some momentum and some stamina moving forward to, you know, be strong throughout the year. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, hey, let's talk about your training. What, it, what, what are you participating in this year and uh, how far are you going to ride? Well, I'm going to do the 50 mile ride and right. that'd be fun. And I, I still need to do the 100 mile, but I haven't had my training up to the level that I would like to get that 100 mile ride done in the right amount of time. So I'll do 50 this year. And it's good because it allows me, you know, it has my own personal challenge of what I need to do for my own emotional well being and uh, physical conditioning. And it's always good to see where I'm at. And I love the group rides. And I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that we're going to get a chance to, to be able to do that again. Yeah. And, and then, of course, the state of Maine at this time of year is beautiful. It's no doubt really about my it. favorite period of time. No doubt about it. You guys do such a great job. And it is so much fun to, to ride through. Uh, it's a lot more rolling out there than, than we're used to here in California. So uh, I, I love it and uh, uh, great stuff. So um, in terms of, uh, I, I read about your kind of mileage goal and the like, would you, would you like to just share a little bit about what the overall goal is for the challenge and, and kind of how that is uh, coming together? And, and, and also I'd love to hear maybe even an update on how the fundraising is going. The fundraising is going great. We're actually right where we want to be. Um, we have really strong numbers. A lot of people uh, will be I think about 400 riders uh, in, on Sunday. And then the, the run and the walk always does quite well. So the, the fundraising numbers are up. The team effort of people who are raising over $10,000 $10, is, is up as well. So the overall enthusiasm and support, not only from the participants, but also from the corporate side and from the community has been through the roof. I think there's a a real joy and a real openness and celebration that the event is actually taking place. And with that, it's been a very positive experience up to, up to this moment. That's great. That's really great to hear. So um, Patrick, I wanted to, to just share with you one thing that we've got going on from the Amgen side. And that is just the, you know, the, the idea that over the course of the last year plus, it's, the pandemic has really uh, impacted the way individuals seek treatment and in many ways even seek uh, screening for cancer, right? A lot of us have been asked to stay home and shelter in place and other things. Uh, at Amgen, obviously we are dedicated to finding innovative solutions for grievous illness, cancer being one of those things. Uh, and now what we're finding and we're recognizing is, is that these innovations really aren't worth much if people aren't out there uh, seeking treatment and connecting with their physicians and making sure they're being screened. So we're, we're starting to really ask for people to try to make that commitment to get back to a normal life of, of seeking care and seeking screenings. Uh, a, 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 any thoughts on sort of how the pandemic has impacted uh, the, the numbers of patients that you're seeing or what people may be able to just think about and do uh, from the perspective of getting back to a normal life, which includes being cautious on preventing, you know, or at least finding a prevent a preventative screen for cancer. Yeah, I think the most important thing moving forward is really getting vaccinated, right? I mean, there's a complete divide in this country, unfortunately, over that, um, which is hard for me to understand because this is it, the data is there. I mean, I myself, my entire family have been vaccinated. I've been traveling quite a bit. I've been working around the world. A lot of other countries do not have the opportunity to get vaccinated and they desperately want that. And they're dealing with the mass, they're dealing with the isolation and the numbers coming up. And I think this is the, one of the things that you're not only getting vaccinated for yourself, but for your neighbor, for your family members, for the people who are most vulnerable. So think about it coming from that place, I think is very important because if you don't, and the, the new variant we're seeing in certain parts of the country that a lot of people are just, the hospitals are overwhelmed, the nurses are overwhelmed, the doctors are overwhelmed. And what that does is it prevents people from coming in and getting their screenings. It gives them the anxiety of going into a hospital and into that setting to get their screenings. And that's very important because we, we're seeing more survivorship because we're getting people in earlier and we're getting that diagnosed earlier. And I think this is the critical thing, and this is the problem that we're facing right now as a society. People are not getting their screenings done on time. They're afraid to, and, and these are the steps that really worry me in the future, because we're gonna have people who have been diagnosed and they're further down the road, and it's gonna make things that much harder on them and their family and on us as a society. And I think these are the steps that we need to take. We've been very fortunate to be able to give the support groups virtually, 
And but we still need the hands on effect. You need to get in there. You need to see your doctor. You need to get the treatment. And these are the ways that we can do that. And wear the mask. I know it's uncomfortable. Believe me, I get it. But these are small things that we can do to give people the freedom to live their life sooner than what we're dealing with right now. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll just click on this one more one more word that you use there, which is survivorship. I mean, we've talked many times in the past about sort of the journey of a cancer patient all the way from, you know, screening and testing through treatment, through survivorship. And some of that has to do with proper nutrition and, and healthy lifestyle. Do you want to talk a little bit about how the Dempsey Center takes on those topics? And you have a full kitchen there, you've done uh, all sorts of work when it comes to proper nutrition and, and teaching and coaching people about healthy lifestyle. Right. And that's half the thing. It's like, how do you food, fuel yourself? How do you give yourself the strength to go into, you know, staying healthy, stopping the recurrences? What are we putting into our body? So the great thing is we have a tasting kitchen and, a, you know, a, a place where we can go and we can do stuff online now. We've actually have some stuff upcoming. So I encourage you to go to Dempsey Center, go to the website and, and, and get online and uh, register for the class that's upcoming, what helps you with nutrition, because that's a very key component to survivorship, as well as prevention. So what are we putting into our body? And we have a great program in place to really support people and help them and to empower them and giving them the right food. It gives them the energy to go off to do the cycling and the running and all of that stuff contributes. That's why holistically that approach is so important. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned the website. Is there a, a anywhere else on social media that you'd like to sort of uh, call out where people can go and connect with? with yeah, you can follow us on Twitter or Facebook and certainly Instagram and then the website itself for Dempsey Center. Uh, just type in Dempsey Center and it will come up for you. And then you, you can navigate that pretty easily and figure out what it is that you need. I think that's the most important thing is when someone comes in and says, what can we do to help support you? Uh, no one knows themselves better than anyone else. Then, then we just want to know what we can do to support you. Listen to yourself and then let us know how we can help you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and maybe we'll say this again at the, at the end, but I, I'll also put in a plug for Amgen Biotech on Instagram and then Amgen Oncology specifically on Twitter. So all, all, all the latest goings on, anything uh, that anyone may wish to, to learn about the innovation and the things that we've got going on here at Amgen specifically, Amgen Oncology on Twitter is a, a tremendous Well, place. That, that's a great opportunity for you. I have a question for you, if I may. I mean, yeah. you've had a lot going on the last year. What kind of breakthroughs have you had at Amgen that you're excited about that can help our communities? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the best way to talk about that is to just stick to this idea of like really focusing on getting patients to get returning back to care. Uh, I, you know, I think if, if, if folks want to go to Amgen Oncology, on Twitter, you'll see a lot of more of our uh, product focused uh, material there, but uh, I'll, I'll let people kind of read on that, but, uh, but you'll see some innovations where we've, we've done a lot of, uh, a lot of study. We're, we're committed to grievous illnesses and we've come out with uh, a new product or two, but I'll, I'll let people kind of read about that on, uh, on Amgen Oncology Twitter if they can. Great, and I think that's the exciting thing for us is we work hand in hand with the doctors and with the patients to give them the best support and the best team possible for the, the best outcome that we can achieve. And I think that's the thing is we work with all the different disciplines, everything works for everybody. And it's finding that right menu, if you will, for the patient and for the family that works right for them and their lifestyle and in the conflict that they're going through. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it, that's an interesting comment too, because what we've found from just a pure business uh, perspective over the last years, we've really had to adjust the way that we interact with the healthcare community. Uh, it, it's difficult to be in person. It's difficult to educate in, in person. We've moved to, you know, uh, virtual meetings and virtual education and the like. So, uh, you know, call out to, to all of the field-based staff from Amgen for really finding new ways of working and putting those patients that are in need at the center of their mind and finding new ways of, of connecting our information to the healthcare community. It's been a tremendous show of resilience over the last couple of years and uh, it has not been easy for cancer patients and therefore we've tried to do everything and anything that we can to adjust to try to serve them better in this kind of new world. 
Yeah, we have too, and I'm really proud of the of the staff and their ability to to pivot and to really you know solve the problems very quickly and efficiently and working together as a team and and just the connection to the community, even if it's it's not in person, if we can use our technology in a proper way and in a positive way, I think that's very good. And we'll yeah. probably continue on with this. We'll have a lot of new programs where we can reach people in rural Maine um, where we couldn't before. And that's our objective is to really get to the people who are most in need. And um, there's some other work that we need to do to get the infrastructure in the state so that it's possible that we can support that technology. Uh, and hopefully that will continue to evolve as well. Yeah, and I mean, even just on a lighter note, just circling back to the challenge itself, I know it, it was so great that we had the opportunity to do so in a remote fashion last year. We, you know, here in California, we tried to navigate a, a, a century route with about five or six of us, we were several flat tires, no, no rest stops, no rest stations, no uh, chase cars. So uh, we, look, we look forward to sort of getting back together and doing the event uh, with you in the future, but, but uh, you have our commitment to do it remote in the meantime as well. So, well, thank you very much, and and you know, thanks for the support from Amgen from day one, who got behind this, behind just the inspiration of the work that you're doing there, and also the the impact that you've had in the community. For us, is, we're very grateful for that support. Absolutely, thanks so much, Patrick. We did not uh, allow for questions on on the live in Instagram feed here, but I think we do have one or two that we had uh, prepared in advance. Do you have time for one or two questions? Yeah, I'm here for you, whatever you need, absolutely. All right, if you don't mind, I'm gonna read one here. Sure. Um, do you plan to bring the Dempsey Center worldwide or expand into other states? Well, our goal is definitely to connect to other like-minded centers, not you know throughout New England, but also throughout the country and then internationally as well. That way, if we have a network, then we can help people that we come in contact with. And I travel quite a bit. People are aware of the center and the work that we do. And they'll, they'll suggest something. I was just in Ireland and we had a great connection with a like-minded center over there. And that will begin a dialogue and hopefully we can do events with them and bring more awareness to their cause as well in, in Dublin, Ireland. So and that's exciting and that's our goal. I think that's the most sustainable way of moving forward. I think the success that we have is because the empowerment that our community gives us. We would not be able to keep it going without the support of the community. And I think that's the thing that when you travel throughout the country, the, the centers that are doing well have tremendous community support. And if we can bring awareness to that center and a light to it, as well as connect a network, I think that's the, the best way moving forward. Because I truly believe that as soon as someone is diagnosed, the type of work that the center's doing and other like-minded centers around the world are doing should go hand in hand immediately upon diagnosis because you have this window. And this came out of the workshop that we did together at the, uh, that the Atlantic put on a couple of years ago now. I can't believe the, the time. That really, I realized, you know, there's a huge period of time between getting diagnosed and finding out what the proper uh, procedure will be moving forward as far as what type of treatments, what type of medicines, and, and in that time, that's where we can slip in and help with the mental aspect, with the nutrition, with the physical stamina, and just with the questions and the anxiety. How can we help support that and eliminate that? So that's our goal. And, you know, anybody who is listening to this right now who has a center or works at a center around the world, or, or please reach out to us. Let us connect. Let us work together. Yeah, I would love to, to be a reference for you on that one. I mean, if anyone's watching, Patrick and the, the team there, uh, th this group has learned a lot over the years and they are not shy about sharing those lessons learned and best practices with other centers. And I, I applaud that. I think that's just such a great way to help spread this word, uh, you know, globally, honestly, the way, the way you just described it. So um, one more quick one for you. You've mentioned a couple of times during this uh, session that cancer clearly runs in the family, uh, for your family. So any healthy habits that you've, you've sort of answered this already, any healthy habits you want to reinforce for those watching, uh, anything you think about knowing that, you know, cancer has impacted your family and the way you take care of yourself. Right. Screenings, like most important, like uh, colonoscopy is really important. You know, for a man, you got to get your, you got to get in, you need to get your physical once a year. And then what are you putting into your body? That's the other thing, you know, are you getting enough physical exercise? What type of mindfulness work are you doing? What's your belief system? All those things contribute. 
and right now as a society, we're being thrown so much negativity and so much anxiety constantly that all these things really help you kind of navigate that. Certainly exercise can take the anxiety away, what you're putting in your body, what you're eating can help you, you know, supporting your family, doing the physicals, it takes that anxiety away. It's like, you know, what's my family history? Explaining that to your doctor and that we're seeing certainly, you know, we need to get these screenings started earlier. You need to start to talk to your doctor about what your family history is. All of those things are really important to remember. And we as a family need to remember that as well, and we do. Great advice. Um, I hear you. I need to take some of that advice myself. Uh, I think we're, uh, we're coming to a close here. I wanna, uh, I wanna make one more plug, if it's okay, for Amgen Biotech Instagram and Amgen Oncology on Twitter. Uh, please follow us. We've got a lot of great things going on. We would love to have a relationship with anyone out there that, that, that wants to learn more about the goings on here at Amgen. Uh, with that, Patrick, I want to thank you, and, and I'll toss it to you to see if you have any final comments for the audience here. Well, thank you very much. And yeah, there's still time to, to, to come and get involved in the, in the challenge. So go to the Dempsey Center, DempseyChallenge.org. We'll give all the information there. You can find out about the work that we're doing at the center. You can also register for the challenge if you want to, either virtually or in person. Uh, we've done a good job so that there's less people that we've been sending the bibs out and registration out to people. So we're making it really easy for them so that they can come and celebrate life with all of us. That's so great. I wish you the best always and uh, have a great event. Say hi to everybody at the Dempsey Center for us. And uh, we'll, we'll be participating virtually and uh, I guess live on text with you guys. And yeah, uh, we'll be communicating. I wish you the best. Well, thank you very much. And, and thanks right. for everything. Thank you, be safe. Bye, everybody. Right. Thanks be for your safe. time. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.